Hello there, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria. We are having a look at summer 2024 for you singles out there looking for new love. We're covering the months of July and August. We're going to see what is activating for you, maybe what is leaving, and uh, see what messages the universe has to say. We're also going to pull out some soulmate manifestation messages as well and see where we're at with that. So um, we do have a, a couple of things going on astrologically throughout the next couple of months. Um, remember, energies that activate don't always necessarily play out within the two-month time frame. Depending on your situation, they can last a little longer. However, we will start with uh, Venus, the planet of love, right? Venus is moving through Cancer and will land in Leo on July 11th and stay there till the beginning of August. So Venus and Leo, I don't know if you remember last year, we had Venus retrograde in Leo. That was not a good time for a lot of people. A lot of explosive energy came about with that one. Um, but Venus in Leo this year is a lot more pleasant. Okay, so this is Leo energy, getting yourself out there, having fun, socializing, and maybe even making some bold moves to find love or to, uh, you know, open those doors for yourself to attract love into your life. We do have a Mercury retrograde, okay, so heads up for you there, which is coinciding with the new moon in Leo on August 4th. And, you know, the new moon in Leo can really be in this energy of boldly going after your dreams. And what do you need to do to open the portal to love, to attract people into your life? Well, we've got Saturn retrograde in Pisces for quite a while. And Saturn being your traditional ruler, um, this can be quite helpful for you to pause and reflect, to take a step back, look at the big picture, and maybe make some changes on your path to love um, and finding that and, you know, bringing something into reality. Instead of fantasizing about it, we're going to take some real world approaches at finding love. So that can actually kind of help you. Will it slow things down a little bit? Perhaps, right? But just long enough for you to kind of get a good insight and good handle on it and maybe make some changes because that retrograde in Mercury on August 4th with that new moon, this is about trying new things, meeting new people, getting out of your comfort zone. And with Mercury, Mercury is about communication and also can um, affect technology, right? So you might be of the mindset that, you know, if you've been, you know, doing the online dating game, right, and you're like, man, it's just getting worse every day, um, you know, or maybe you're not making the meaningful connections that you're looking for, this can be where you really do get some insight to try something different right? That Leo energy, what do you need to do differently? So um, by the same token, if you haven't been online dating, maybe that's your shot to do that, right? But we've got a full moon in Capricorn, and this is significant for you as well, because Capricorn's ruled by uh, Saturn, right? Um, and this is on the 21st of July, okay? Um, it is at the 29th degree, so you might feel a little bit of pressure to find love or to open yourself up to love. You could be going out, um, you know, uh, to fr friends, houses, families, you know, uh, backyard barbecues, things like that. And, you know, people can really be putting the grills to you. Um, and so, but you might also be feeling the internal pressure in yourself as well. It's the 29th degree and it feels like, oh my God, clock is ticking, right? But the 29th degree is a perfect time to release, to transform, to let go as well. And because it's the second full moon in Capricorn in a month, it's a blue moon. So something could potentially magically happen for you as well, right? Expect the unexpected, something could happen out of the blue. Uh, you know, you could meet the person of your dreams, just boom, out of the blue, just seemingly by coincidence, but it's, uh, it's uh, the hand of the universe at play, right? So it can be something really positive for you. Um, but we have got a full moon in your sign, August 19th, of course, wrapping up a cycle, look to see where you were, what you were doing at the new moon in your sign at the beginning of the year, and see how how far you've come, but this can be where something really does um, come to fruition for you, or again, you're completing a big cycle and now you're ready um, to open those doors to love. Got the page of pentacles at the back of the deck, so invitations, offers, opportunities are coming in there for you. Page of pentacles, you're manifesting uh, new people, new things into your life, and this is also an energy of learning. So maybe you're applying some life lessons that you've learned in love. And this can help you in your next stage and your next path and your relationships. 
but it is new and it can be some positive messages coming in by the same token if you've been doing something uh, sidetracked um, out of you know not necessarily focusing on love maybe you've been focusing on your money your career uh, the page of pentacles can show that you do have something positive that is uh, happening in that realm and so if you're waiting for like a job offer to make more money thing things that just make you feel a little bit more confident with yourself um, then this can be uh, happening for you and then this can be part of what opens the portal for love and we've got the lovers card right here now this is absolutely awesome for you guys of course when we're doing a love reading uh, the lovers card is a great one and of course also also empress card is a really good one so this is about partnerships true love soulmate energy coming in and activating for you the hand of the universe is guiding two people together but ultimately we need to remember in this energy that the choice is yours Right. This used to be called the choice card matters of the heart. What do I really want? What kind of person do I really want? What qualities do I really want? Um, and so in this energy, you're reminded it's your personal power to say yes or to say no. Right. You always have that choice. Right. Even that choice to open up to love. Right. Because sometimes we can go back and forth a little bit. But this is a little bit of a green light there for you. It's also Gemini energy. So you could be um, connecting with or attracting towards you a fellow air sign. Uh, it could be Gemini. Um, it could also be a Libra. OK, um, but the lover's card also because it is a Gemini energy, it's ruled by Mercury. So again, this Mercury energy and especially oddly enough, the Mercury retrograde can actually help you to make some decision in regards to your love life, right? People think of Mercury retrograde as a really negative thing. And while it can be if we, um, you know, uh, if we let things get out of hand, right? Um, and if we don't take our time, right? That's the key with retrogrades is taking a step back, looking at the big picture and take your time, right? Don't make rash decisions. And then things are a little bit easier, right? So it's not like a totally negative thing or anything like that, right? But it can help you think a little bit clearer in that energy. We've got the magician here as well. Look at you, Aquarius. Go. You're focused on what you want. You're focused on creating the life that you want. You are being very resourceful and maybe even very creative um, to meet new people. Like, what differently can I do to meet new people? And you're figuring it out and you're doing that with that magician energy. You are the magician. You are skilled um, and you are harnessing all that power of the universe and all the magic of the universe to bring love into your life and make something happen. So this can certainly represent your manifestations are happening, but it's also a key if you haven't been working with law of attraction or anything like that, use those new moons to set your intentions. It's really that simple. Focus on the things that you want. All right. And speak them out loud. Speak them into existence. Right. And then we've got to trust and have faith and we've got to be open to receiving. We've got the temperance card out here as well. So the temperance card is Sagittarian energy. So we've got some fire sign energy, right? And we've got Jupiter at play with that as well. Um, but the temperance card does bring in a sense of balance, a sense of calm and patient energy. It also brings in healing. So if, you know, some of you maybe be mending a broken heart or maybe you've kind of been a little bit in hermit mode um, for the last little while. You've got your angels working with you, spirit working with you, guiding two people together. Um, and it's a very calming energy when we do get this. But yes, you could have an air sign or a fire sign um, coming in. Um, but with this fiery energy, you're also creating something, right? The temperance card, we typically show um, fire and water. And when we put fire and water together, we create something different. Um, alchemy, right? The magician is the alchemist. And so in this energy, we've got fire, we've got water, we're creating some steam, we're creating a little bit of magic. So your power to create and to manifest love into your life. But trust the guidance that you're receiving, trust any dreams that you may be having any signs that you may be seeing, um, because there's doors being opened for you here. And we can see that opening up here in your reading. So you know, be ready to make maybe some choices uh, there in that energy, but ask for guidance um, when you need it. We've got the high priestess coming in here. So the high priestess, again, another very 
spiritual energy. This is number one saying to you that and when it comes to your love life, your intuition is going to be the key. Your connection with yourself, your higher self and with the cosmos is really what's going to help make things happen for you. Um, dream big, think big, uh, look at that big picture, right? Um, you know, and trust what comes your way, right? But the high priestess also um, about making decisions. And when it does come to making decisions, and we do have the lover's card there, trust yourself, right? What is your first instinct? What does your intuition tell you? And go with that, right? Um, because it's never going to steer you wrong. And you are highly intuitive sign as well. And, you know, I mean, hey, you're attracting some very, very powerful spiritual connection, or at least guided to you by the stars, right? So why wouldn't you trust your inner wisdom? Why wouldn't you trust your intuition, right? You're very connected and, um, you know, it's like, uh, the, if I feel like the only time that maybe you feel like you've made a wrong step in your life is when you ignored your intuition and you're like, damn it, I should have, I knew it, I should have, right? We don't want to do that. We want to trust it first out of the gate. Your connection with the moon is going to be very powerful as well. The high priestess very connected with the moon cycles. And again, you got two very, very powerful full moons that are um, really guided by your chart rulers, right? Your traditional ruler of Saturn and your modern day ruler of, of Uranus, right? So things shaken up a little bit, finding freedom from things that have been holding you back facing your fears, but also maybe something sudden and unexpected might happen for you. So trust those feelings that you've got, work with the moon cycles and watch the magic happen. But there could be something that you don't see coming. The high priestess is a very quiet energy, very mute energy and keeper of secrets and mysteries. So there could be someone that reveals their secret feelings for you. You might decide that you're going to take the bull by the horns, right? And you're going to take the first move and reveal your feelings to somebody. Um, and uh, But there's just a little bit of mystery in the air with your love life. We've got the tower. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, there you go. You are um, lucky you. You're the only one so far to get the tower card in these love readings. No, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Thing, right the tower card people don't like it because it does represent something um falling away something being shaken up sudden unexpected change and we don't always like sudden unexpected changes because it makes us uncomfortable so the tower can be coming in here for you to help to propel you out of your comfort zone because the tower does come in for our best and highest good every single time and it's the universe's way of helping you get unstuck or release any stagnant energy so um, this can really help us clear the path and make room for something new, right? So it's like prepare for the new. And in order to do that, we got to get rid of some old uh, cobwebs, right? The tower can also be a massive epiphany or a revelation, something that you didn't quite expect or maybe something that um, you tune into. This can be information coming your way. It can be, again, that secret that may get revealed, right? And it's like, whoa, I didn't expect that. Um, and so something there can really be like, oh, my goodness. And it can just change things for you, right? Change the way you look at things, uh, change your day to day life, right? So sudden unexpected change of all kind, but ultimately it does help you move forward and cleanse your energy to bring in the new. So expect the unexpected when we get the tower. It's also very fast moving energy, right? So um, it's like quick, 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 quick. We've got the death card too. Wow, a lot of changes here for you. Okay, so the death card, yes. Um, you know, it is Scorpio energy, so water sign energy, right? But it's change. And so we've got two cards of change, right? Sudden, unexpected, quick, quick change, right? And then what do we have with the little, slightly gentler um, death card energy with change? But sometimes in order to change our life for the better, we do need to be willing to do the work and cleanse and purge anything that is like stagnant, right? And this can be your fears. It can be something that you've been holding on to from past relationships. Um, it can be anger and hate and all that kind of stuff, right? And, you know, um, we want freedom, right? We want to free ourselves of those things. 
And so you could be getting closure about something. You could be taking the bull by the horns and cutting energetic ties, finding forgiveness in your heart, right? So that you can be empowered to move forward in a better way. Whatever your situation is, we're out with the old and in with the new, with the death card, this change, evolu evolution, transformation. This is growth as well, personal growth, emotional growth, spiritual growth here also. So yes, you could potentially be attracting a Scorpio person ruled by Pluto. But remember, we've got Pluto retrograde in your sign. And that's going to be retrograde right up until ooh, I think it's November. And that can actually be really helping you right to, uh, you know, to um, embrace the future and embrace your future self, right? So Pluto uh, does go into the depths, into the shadows, brings information out or maybe brings a secret out. Um, but Pluto likes change, right? Pluto likes us to change and transform and, you know, look to the future and not dwell on things in the past. So some very powerful energy that's coming in there for you. We've got the six of wands, but you shall prevail. You shall prevail and overcome the six of wands is an energy of victory, success. We're leaving our troubles, our difficulties, our challenges behind, and we are moving forward. We're having a good time, right? So this is awesome. The six of wands restores a little bit of peace after, uh, after some, you know, turbulent energy. The six of wands also is public gatherings and events. So this could be a key for you to meeting new people is to get outside and meet people, number one, right? But you could potentially meet somebody at a gathering or an event of some kind or something that does involve other people. All right, so that can be a key to your success. And we've got the King of Wands here as well. So this could be a person. Again, we've already said fire sign energy. So this could potentially be that. The King of Wands would be someone who is exciting to be around, someone that likes um, a little bit of adventure, um, that's someone that's passionate about whatever it is they're interested in. They got a lot of charisma, a lot of chemistry. Um, and, uh, you know, they're very creative and inspirational, right? So this can be a really fun, very interesting person to be around, uh, kind of get your heart pumping a little bit. Um, it can be a male or a female, doesn't matter, right? But someone who takes the lead, they're bold in their energy. But this can also be you. This can be you looking out into the world, looking out into the future, going, I'm going to get what I'm looking for. I'm going to take action. I'm going to realize my dreams and I'm going to find love and I'm just going to keep an open heart and an open mind and see what happens. Right. So it's a great energy coming in there, taking the lead. And this is an energy of success as well, by the way. Right. So awesome. We're going to pull out a few uh, soulmate manifestation cards here. We're going to look at the symbols and we're also going to look at the messages as well. So we have family, but that we do have a crystal. So that's beautiful. We've got familiar with an open door finances with a clock. And remember, we already did say with that page of pentacles that some of you may have some things going on with your money or your job. There's that confirmation, okay, and this can also be your person that you're attracting to you that is working on that for the moment. We've got another open door with relocation, priorities with a mirror, and unworthy with a mirror. So that's interesting. So we do have two, um, two open doors and two mirrors. So let's start with the mirrors, priorities and unworthy. All right, big message from the universe here. Are you really ready for love? You can choose yes, you can choose no, you can choose maybe, right? But if you don't know, how is the universe going to know, right? So this is saying here that, you know, do you have time in your life for love? Look in the mirror, reflect, right? And make that decision or, and this is what the tower is helping us with, right? To clear out space and time for another person. And this is reiterating that message, unworthy you deserve love so if you've been telling yourself that oh maybe I haven't found love because I don't deserve it uh no we're gonna get rid of that energy and that's simply not true we talked about finances already we do have relocation and familiar so you could already potentially know or have met somewhere in your journey through life this time this lifetime or last lifetime right um you uh someone is familiar to you so there's that spark of familiarity relocation someone could be new to your city or town you may also just live a little bit of a distance away but two open doors there we do have a crystal so a spiritual connection there and 
I'm very excited about starting a family with you and creating new traditions. And family doesn't necessarily have to represent children if you're not going to add any more bambinos. But family is that togetherness and that connection. So it's a beautiful connection there. Someone wants to create a life with you. I'm going to leave all that there for you folks. Hopefully there's something here for you. Like, share, subscribe if there was. Throw a heart in the comments down below. I'll heart you back and we'll spread the love all around and attract it to you. I'll see you guys later.